Happy Friday, guys. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. Normally on Fridays, we do a story time. And last Friday, we started our series in the Devil's Family with part one. We will pick up with that series next week, but today, or rather this evening, I am going to be a special guest on the Reveal Report with George Iceman and Jesse Zvoder. Most of you know that I have been on the Reveal Report once before when we did a deep dive into Glam's Castle, a topic we had already covered on this channel many months ago. For this deep dive, George asked me if I would dig into Anton LaVey, and boy am I glad that he did. There is so much more to Anton LaVey's story than we've been told. Now I will place a link to the Reveal Reports YouTube channel down in the description box below so that you can join us tonight as well. I believe we're going to be going live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If that is not the correct time, then I will place the correct time on the community tab before we go live. And yes, you heard that correct. It will be a live show, so you are free to type in questions and comments during the show. I also want to give out a very, very, very special thank you to all of our new patrons. You guys are truly rock stars. I am humbled and very, very grateful for all of you. I, I literally cannot say thank you enough. Now, because this show is a little bit different than the normal story time show, I won't have a credit reel. So for some of you that joined Patreon this week, your name will appear in the credits on Mondays, Monday Mystery. I've already filmed that. But a few of you have joined since I filmed the Monday Mystery, so your names will appear on Wednesday's show of next week. If you are at the producer level on Patreon, please send me your businesses or your website, social media, whatever it is that you want me to promote for you that's part of being a producer. Your support goes a long way in helping us run this channel, so therefore this channel is going to do what we can to support you as well. If you're in the $10 and up bracket, make sure you're sending me in some stories that you want me to cover on this channel. If the story you send in is a little bit too risky for YouTube at the moment I will contact you back to find a new story but I'll probably put the risky story to the side to do later once all of our regulations and boundaries will say have lifted now I want to again give a little bit of a sneak peek into Anton LaVey before the show tonight because there again is so much more to Anton LaVey than we have been led to believe if you are like me, you probably think of Anton LaVey as a big living cartoon character. From the outside looking in, he seems just like a man who was pretty gothic, who, who kind of made a mockery of his own self and therefore seemed a little bit harmless. He did attract a lot of celebrities, but if you watch like the mainstream narrative of Anton LaVey, many people believe that the celebrities associated with Anton LaVey were doing that for publicity stunts. Let me tell you, friends, they were not doing it for publicity stunts. Now, a lot of these stories with celebrities and their connections to Anton LaVey, we will be covering on the Reveal Report tonight. Not this morning, but tonight. So, let's talk a little bit about who Anton LaVey was for those who don't know who he was. Anton LeBay was born Howard Stanton Levy on the 11th of April, 1930 in Chicago, Illinois. According to the mainstream narrative, he was born into a very secular Jewish family. When LeBay was young, his family moved to the San Francisco Bay Area and he ended up attending high school just north of San Francisco. According to the legends, he dropped out at 16 years old in order to basically join the circus. You see, it is stated that Anton LaVey was extremely musically talented, which we will talk about tonight because there is a possibility that he has a granddaughter or a daughter out there that everybody knows that is also very musically talented. But again, you'll have to join us tonight for that. 
Anton LaVey would do musical performances, allegedly, for the circus. And his whole story was that while he was working for the circus, he would see these quote-unquote good Christian men coming into the circuses and basically making a mockery of themselves and acting in really rowdy ways. And they would turn around the next day and go to church on Sunday where they would pretend to be holier than thou. Anton would go on to say that this really greatly affected him and his view on Christianity. In fairness, I do know what he's talking about. Sometimes it seems that the most fundamentalist of Christians probably have the most to hide. Judge not, lest ye be judged, right? However, many people think that this whole story of him joining the circus at 16 might be a fabrication. In my opinion, doesn't really matter because I questioned the inception of Anton LaVey from the very beginning. Since I've looked over his whole story, I do believe that he was placed where he was placed for a very specific reason by the powers that be. You guys know who those powers are that I am referring to. In 1948, at just 17 years old, Anton LaVey traveled down to Los Angeles where he started playing music in certain nightclubs and burlesque clubs. The story goes that he ended up having an affair with Marilyn Monroe, basically, while he was working in these nightclubs. Allegedly, he was working for the Mayan Theater where Marilyn Monroe, according to the story, was also working, but the theater claims that she never worked for them, so there is some haziness there along with that story. However, he will end up having a very publicized relationship with Jane Mansfield, which again, we'll get into more tonight on the Reveal Report. Jane Mansfield was like the counterpart to Marilyn Monroe during this time. In 1950, Anton LaVey headed back to San Francisco. He ended up enrolling into a community college where he studied criminology. This was also around the time of the Korean War. My grandfather was actually a medic in the Korean War. The story goes that Anton LaVey registered himself into this community college to avoid the draft. Again, I don't know if this is true or not. I wasn't around then, but I do know historically people have figured out ways to dodge the draft. And if you don't know what the draft is, the draft was something the government would do, not just the American government. There were a lot of governments that did this that would force young men to enroll into the military, especially during wartime, to basically draft it, be forced to go off and be a part of these big wars. We don't have it anymore here in America, but it was really big, especially during the Vietnam War. You'll hear a lot of stories about what they call draft dodgers. A lot of them ran off to Canada, all sorts of stories about young boys trying to avoid going off to war, basically. Anton LaVey claims that he worked for the San Francisco Police Department with his criminology major as a photographer and as a psychic medium. In fact, it seems that Anton LaVey made quite a living for himself as a psychic medium before founding the Church of Satan. In 1951, Anton LaVey married his first wife, Carol Lansing. She was only 15 years old at the time. And in 1952, Anton LaVey and Carol Lansing welcomed their first child and their only child, not Anton LaVey's only child, but their only child, Carla. Around this time, Anton LaVey allegedly becomes friends with the writers of the horror and fiction magazine, Weird Times. By 1960, allegedly Anton LaVey was having an affair with a woman named Diane Hegarty. So he divorces Carol Lansing and creates a life with Diane. They never get married, but they do stay together for about 24 years. Out of all of his partners, she seems to be the most prominent. In 1963, their daughter, Zena, was born. She happens to look a lot like Taylor Swift, eerily like Taylor Swift, which we will talk about tonight on The Reveal Report. If you saw the episode with Janine from Terror by Janine and Tom Numbers that we did a few days ago, you probably saw me ask a question regarding that relationship. 
and we'll get more into it tonight on the reveal report. At this point, Anton LaVey becomes like semi-famous in San Francisco. He's very recognizable. He's still performing in bars and nightclubs at night, and obviously he's doing a lot of paranormal stuff all over the city, and he happens to drive around the city in a hearse. He also has the reputation for throwing crazy parties, <laughs> and at this point, he had a pet black leopard named Zoltan. He would go on to have a pet lion down the road. On Friday nights, Anton LaVey started to give lectures on the occult. These lectures cover topics like cannibalism, vampirism, werewolves, aka shape-shifting, you know, all that fun stuff that we're now learning might not be fiction. This is around the time that Anton LaVey starts to go by Anton LaVey. As I said earlier, he, he was born with the name Howard. I guess you can't really be a mystical, paranormal Church of Satan runner with the name like Howard. On the evening of April 30th, 1966, Anton LaVey was giving his usual lecture on the occult. But at this point, he decided to shave off all of his hair. This was supposed to be in the tradition of the ancient executioner, which makes you kind of wonder what his role was in some of these ceremonies and rituals that weren't videotaped that they did in his church. This was also the night that he declares that the Church of Satan is founded. Anton claims that this is a faith based on carnal needs of man to be selfish. He sets the altars up a lot like the Black Mass altars that we've studied in prior videos where there's typically a naked woman laying in front of the altar and all sorts of stuff happens around her that I can't really talk about on this channel. Anton LaVey also declares 1966 to be year one, or Anno Satanus, the year one of the age of Satan. Anton LaVey, as I said in the beginning of this episode, in my opinion, before studying him, reminded me a lot of a cartoon character. He was very eccentric, very theatrical, and with this type of personality, he did start to film a lot of his antics. He would recreate rituals that were performed by the Knights Templar, voodoo, and Norse practices. He started to teach people magic. He also started to perform weddings and funerals. He also started working on the Satanic Bible. Now I'm going to read to you the nine statements of the Satanic Bible. Again, we will get more into this with George and Jesse tonight on the Reveal Report because I've never practiced the occult. There is a limit to my understanding when I review this stuff. So I'm probably going to kick the ball over to them tonight when we get to this topic to have them kind of fill in the blanks that maybe I've missed. So the nine satanic statements are, Satan represents indulgence, not abstinence. Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypercritical self-deceit. Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasting on ingrates. Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Satan represents man just as another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those that walk on all fours because of this divine spiritual and intellectual development has become the most vicious animal of all. Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they all lead to physical, mental, and emotional gratification. And Satan has been the best friend of the church has ever had as he has kept it in business all these years. I have to admit to you guys, when I first read that last one, number nine, I literally laughed out loud. I thought that was really funny, and it's kind of true. So, um, yeah. And as we know, the Christian churches themselves are also been infiltrated and corrupted too. So there is a there's a deeper meaning to that. But I did find that quite humorous when I first read it. Now, on February one of nineteen sixty seven. Anton LaVey had his first satanic wedding. This was between journalist John Raymond and NYC socialite Judith Case. 
LaVey is now called the Black Pope. At three years old, LaVey's daughter, Zena, is baptized to the left-handed path of Satan. This is recorded onto an album called The Satanic Mass that you can still look up on YouTube today and listen to. Now, Zena seems to be the child out of all three of his children that he is going to utilize the most. And again, we're going to get into that tonight on the Reveal Report. Zena's mom, Diane, also considered herself to be a sorcerer and the co-founder of the Church of Satan with her dad, Anton LaVey. Let's just say Zena herself has had a very rough life. In 1975, Michael Aquino becomes the editor of the Church of Satan newsletter. We have heard a lot about Michael Aquino in these last few years. In my opinion, he's a very, very, very dangerous man. Michael Aquino would eventually leave the Church of Satan to form his own like subset of Satanism, and this was called the Temple of Set. Michael Aquino claims to have invoked Satan when he felt LaVey was not doing Satanism right. He also claims that Satan like showed him a special text that nobody else has seen. Like Michael Aquino is now the ch Satan's chosen one and he's going to like reveal to him this hidden text that's called Coming Forth by the Night. He also claims that in this moment of invoking Satan, that Satan revealed to Michael Aquino that Satan's real name isn't Satan, but Set, which was an Egyptian god's name. These temples of Set have now been established all over the United States. Michael Aquino is also a political scientist as well as a military officer. He has been accused of doing some really bad things with human beings in this dark group of people, which again, we're going to elaborate on with the reveal report tonight. In 1984, Diane Hegarty and LaVey split and she actually files a restraining order against him. There's not a whole lot of detail as to why she filed a restraining order against him, but the claims their daughter Zena would go on to make makes you really wonder what was happening in that house before she left. Then we see the entrance of Blanche Barton and she becomes Anton LaVey's final partner. She was born Sharon Lee Densley on October 1, 1961. So she is younger than his oldest daughter, Carla. Just gonna put that out there. In 1993, Anton LaVey and Blanche Barton have their son. This is Anton LaVey's third and final child. They name him Satan Xerxes Kamachi LaVey. I mean, you're going to name your kid Satan. That's disgusting. LaVey did appear in her book called The Secret Life of a Satanist. Now, there's not a whole lot out there about their son, Satan, He's, what, 10 years younger than me, so he would be, what, like 27, 28 today. And that's okay. I, you know, I don't blame him for not really having a social media presence, or if he does have a social media presence, it might be under another name, because naming your child Satan is rather unfortunate. Now, I have some speculations about their son Satan and his relationship with their dad that I will be talking about tonight on the Reveal Report. Again, not gonna get into that right now. This is just a sneak peek. Um, but again, these are just my speculations. Some of the stuff we can't really prove is just kind of connecting the dots. Now, Anton LaVey died on the 29th of October, 1997. He died of a pulmonary edema. He was 67 years old. That's still pretty young. After he died, we do get into a bit of family drama. On November 7th, 1997, so a few days after he passed away, Carla LaVey, which is again his, his oldest daughter, held a press conference to announce her father's passing. Carla announced that she and her stepmother, Blanche Barton, who is 10 years younger than Carla, would be co-high priestess and would co-run the Church of Satan. Barton had already tried to take that role from Satan, the high priestess role, before Anton LaVey died, but he kind of corrected it. You see, Zena had been in that role before, the middle child, Zena, the girl that he really used. But Zena fled 
from the Church of Satan in 1990, which again we'll get to later on tonight with the reveal report. A few days after this press conference where Carla announced that she and her like pseudo stepmother would kind of co-run the, the family business, we'll say, Barton then magically found this like handwritten letter from LaVey claiming that everything he had, all of his royalties, everything was supposed to go to Barton and their son, basically icing out Carla and Zena, the other two children. Now again, this was conveniently a handwritten letter that Barton just happened to find. Well, Carla took it to court and contested it. And of course the court ruled in Carla's favor. So after Carla contested this fake will and a settlement was reached, basically ruling in Carla's favor, all the LaVey belongings would be divided amongst his three children equally, which is fair. This also include, included all the money and royalties. However, Barton was given the Church of Satan. So Carla then went and opened up the first satanic church on Halloween of 1999. So she was basically like, F you, I'm just going to go open up my own church because I'm actually Anton LaVey's daughter, so I could probably draw a bigger crowd than you can, Blanche. The same year, Barton tried to raise about $400,000 to save what they called the Black House. This was the house that Anton LaVey was famous for owning in San Francisco. Yes, it was all black. This is where a lot of his ceremonies took place, all that kind of stuff. It is stated that potentially that was his parents' house and he just kind of took it over and then painted it black and made it kind of a spectacle. Anyway. Blanche did not, she could not raise the $400,000, so they ended up tearing down, the state tore down the house, and now their condo's there. So some interesting information about Anton LaVey, he heavily supported eugenics. I know somebody else who heavily supports eugenics. He allegedly hated rock music and metal music, which seems weird to me because he was you know, especially with metal, like if you're the founder of the Church of Satan, don't you think you should actually like metal music? He also allegedly hated hard drugs, really wasn't into like party substances. Well, certain party substances. He might have been into another party substance that we'll talk about again tonight. He was also a consultant on the film Rosemary's Baby, and allegedly he played the role of Satan that impregnates Rosemary. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a pretty dark movie. It gives me the creeps when I watch it, even before The Great Awakening started happening and we started realizing that this stuff's real. It still really creeped me out. Rosemary's Baby was directed by Roman Polanski, whose wife, Sharon Tate, would go on to lose her life by the followers of Manson on August the 8th of 1969. Now something very interesting is that Jay Sebring was in the house with her. He also lost his life. He was a celebrity hairstyle and a really good friend of Sharon Tate. Apparently they dated before she married Roman Polanski and he allegedly was a member of the Church of Satan. Susan Atkins, who was one of the people there in the Manson family, had also previously played a vampire in one of LaVey's shows, so she also knew LaVey. So there's some strange connections and strange ties to that story, which again, we'll elaborate on tonight as well with George and Jesse. Now, about a year ago, I did a story about a haunted house down in Savannah. This house is 432 Abercorn Street. I will put a link to that video down in the description box below if you have not seen it. This house was built around the year 1868 over a burial site. It is in an area called Calhoun Square. It is known for being a location for child A-B-U-S-E for a triple um, H-O-M-I-C-I-D-E. Again, we have to be very careful about what we say and many, many disappearances. Many people have claimed that this house is actually a portal to hell. And it is rumored that LaVey tried to purchase it to be the location of the Church of Satan on the East Coast. There's also a strange tie that many of his followers have to Lacey Peterson. 
If you're not from America, you might not be familiar with this case. Her body was found in the bay. She was pregnant. Her husband is now currently incarcerated and is sitting on death row for her um, leaving this world, we'll just say. But many people speculate that he might actually be innocent and this might be the doings of potentially some members of LaVey's organization. There's also a curse around, again, Jane Mansfield that we spoke about earlier, which we'll go into detail tonight. Jane Mansfield, again, was the counterpart to Marilyn Monroe. She was part of the Church of Satan, and she had a very weird accident that took her off the earth plane, if you know what I'm saying. Again, there's a whole idea of this curse around her that apparently LaVey put on her. We'll go into that tonight. There's a lot of stuff there. We're also going to go deeper into what they call the satanic panic of the 1980s. The mainstream story is that it was all just a big like bunch of baloney and a lot of this like satanic stuff wasn't really happening, which now we know it, it probably was. At this point before Zena had left the Church of Satan, she was the Church of Satan spokesperson where she had to go out and basically gaslight the situation and make it seem like it was ridiculous. And all the Church of Satan was was just a religious organization where humans were humans and nothing more. Now again, Zena would go on to leave the Church of Satan and disconnect from her family and go on to kind of whistleblow on certain activities, which we'll get into tonight. And of course, tonight we will also talk about Taylor Swift. So that's all we're going to go over this morning. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a debriefing of who this person was because I know many people, especially those that maybe don't live in the United States, aren't familiar with Anton LaVey. If you can, please join us tonight on the Reveal Report so we can get into the real juicy stuff, the real meat and potatoes of his story. George and I have been texting a lot this week back and forth about this situation and about what I have found in his confirmation on certain things. And Anton LaVey's story, again, is nothing like what they've told us it is. In my opinion, this man was not harmless. In my opinion, this man really believed what he practiced and he practiced it with an iron fist and in my opinion he was willing to do anything for satan so once again please join us tonight none of this stuff is meant to scare you at all it's just meant to wake us up as we know the best is yet to come and as we believe a lot of this stuff has already been cleaned up by the by the good guys, by the powers that be on the good side. But the more we continue to expose certain activities and talk about it openly with everybody, the less likely it is for, this, for these types of activities to spring up in the future. All right, guys, I will leave you on a positive note. Remember, Jesus told us our two commandments were to love thy God with all thy heart and to love each other as he has loved us. I look forward to seeing you all tonight on The Reveal Report. If you can't join us tonight, I know that The Reveal Report saves all of their lives, so you can go back and re-watch it on the channel once it's already been put up on the channel's display homepage. And I want to say a very special happy birthday to my niece, Jacqueline. She's turning seven today. I cannot believe She's seven. I'm going to see her a little bit later before I go on the reveal report to have some good old fun. And tomorrow, the 26th, I believe, is David Zuflik's birthday. So if you're on the Dark Outpost, make sure to send him some happy birthday wishes. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you tonight. Thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, there's a link down in the description box below, kind of like iTunes where you can purchase the full song. And thank you again to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys. I love you all, and I will see you tonight. Bye.